far distant, far distant, lies Scotia the brave. But nae headstone memorial shall hallow his grave, whose bones now lie scattered o'er a land no his ain. For young Jamie Foyers in battle was slain. Recruiting sergeants come frae the black watch to markets and fair some recruits for to catch. But all that they listed was forty and twa. Enlist, my bonny laddie, and come a wa. For it is over the mountains and over the main. Through Gibraltar to, to France and Spain. Take a feather to your bonnet and a kilt up in your knee. Enlist, my bonny laddie. Come all go with me. Laddie, you dinna ken the danger that you're in. If your horses was to fleg and your housing was to run, this greedy old fair Murray will only pay your fee. Enlist, my bonny laddie, and come all go with me. For it is over the mountains and over the main. Through Gibraltar to, to France and Spain, take a feather to your bonnet and a kilt up in your knee. Enlist, my bonny laddie, and come all go with me. For it is out o' the barn and into the fire. This greedy old farmer thinks she'll never tire. It's a slavery job of very low degree. Enlist, my bonny laddie, and come all go with me. For it is over the mountains and over the main. Through Gibraltar to France and Spain. Take a feather to your bonnet and a kilt up in your knee. Enlist, my bonny laddie, and come all go with me. And your meal and kale, your sour sown sirens and your ill brewed ale, when your buttermilk and wine and your bread by a draw, enlist my bonny laddie and come a walk, for it is over the mountains and over the main, through Gibraltar up to France and Spain, take a feather to your bonnet and a kilt up in your knee, enlist my bonny laddie and come a walk with me. To rattles o' the drum, I and that'll pay it all. Enlist, my bonny laddie, and come a walk. For it is over the mountains and over the main. Through Gibraltar to France and Spain. Take a feather to your bonnet and a kilt up in your knee. Enlist, my bonny laddie, and come a walk with me. A mole, a mass, a mat. The cat sat on the mat. Belloom, belly, belorum, till the dog get there before him. An old piece of schoolboy doggerel from the Latin class to help us remember the first two words of that worthy language taught to us, the verb to love and the noun war. Love and conflict, two apparently contradictory attitudes, and yet in this collection of songs we would hope to illustrate the tension that can exist within the breast of the lover warrior. On the one hand, the passionate defender of home, hearth, and heritage. And on the other, the vicious creature who, when attacked, defends himself. Midsummer's Eve, 1314, two armies draw upon the green. The stoutest force that e'er was seen around the pan of water. To crush the Scots was Edward's boast, and rule the land from coast to coast. Let Scotsmen quail before his host, like lambs before the slaughter. 
Draw the sword at man at bun, see Scottish dignity return. Let the foreign tyrant learn, each man is at his station. Join the lion of the north and drive the false invader forth to show the world old Scotland's worth, an independent nation. Scots outnumbered three to one Take up their places on the run The children's in the morning sun Defiant as the thistle The English lines of armour right Present an awesome fearful sight Behind each mounted southern knight The spears and lances grizzle Draw the sword at ban at bun See Scottish dignity return Let the foreign tyrant learn Each man is at his station Join the lion of the north And drive the false invader forth To show the world old Scotland's worth An independent nation Mercenary knight, de boon, in armour black from toe to plume, spurs out to change the goose's tune to coronach of sorrows. He thunders at him across the plain, loose wheels his pony in disdain, and drives his axe through skull and brain, and ends de boon's tomorrows. Draw the sword that ban at bun, see Scottish dignity return. Let the foreign tyrant learn, each man is at his station. Join the lion of the north and drive the false invader forth to show the world old Scotland's worth, an independent nation. Then charge the English to the field Towards the hedge of Scottish steel And into mud and carnage reel In waves of dead and fallen The Ettrick archers join the fray And send along their deadly spray And countless in the saddle sleigh Whose death knell now is tolling Douglas sing with pride, McNeil and Stuart brave beside, and all who swell that gallant tide to stem the South's advancing. And here's to Robert Bruce by name, our own true king renowned in fame, his flag like red and yellow flame in Scotland's honour dancing. Here's to the Bruce at Bannockburn, with pride each Scottish heart should burn, as Edward back to London turns to mourn his fallen glory. Hail the Lion of the North, send trumpeter and herald forth To tell the world of Scotland's worth and place in freedom's story Hail the Lion of the North, send trumpeter and herald forth To tell the world of Scotland's worth and place in freedom's story The pre-battle duel that was said to have taken place between the heavily armoured knight de Boon and King Robert de Bruce is remembered in the street jingle, Bruce and de Boon were fighting for a croon when Bruce whipped out his battle axe and knocked de Boon down. Perhaps not the most reverend way for the incident to be remembered, but it does illustrate what should have been a great Scottish strength, that with unity of purpose and manoeuvrability we could score over a bigger and better equipped foe. Sadly, though, internal strife plays its all too familiar part in Scottish affairs, and the blood bespattered origins of Macbeth's earldom of Murray were simply a herald for that which was to follow, as in 1592, when the newly appointed Earl of Murray became a fatal statistic at the hand of George Gordon, Marquis of Huntley. Ye Helens and ye Lowlands. Or he ye been, they he slain the Earl o' Murray, and laid him on the green. He was a broad callant, and he played at the ball, and the bonny Earl o' Murray was the flour among them all. Was a broad camant, and his hair shone like the day. Knew the bonny Earl o' Murray 
is laid beneath the clay, and lying may his lady look pray yon castle doon, ere she see the earl o' money come soon down through the tomb. house bickering of the great Scottish families has provided the very excuse, if any were really needed, for ambitious warlords to move in on the seat of power. In 1411, Donald, Lord of the Isles, led his Highland army eastward across the Scottish mainland to challenge Murdoch Stuart, Duke of Albany, for the Earldom of Ross and the title Governor of Scotland. He was confronted by a northeast force which included the Forbes family. But when the clamour of Red Harlaw had died away, the outcome was uncertain to anyone, except that of a further divided Scotland. Sky way a drum a drew in a tree and a drum way a drum a drew drum tre and come ye near and near enough to ye their number see come tell to me John Hill and man what may their numbers be way a drum a drew in a tree and a drum way a drum a drew drum tre it's I come in by the Geary land and doon by Nether Hall. And I saw MacDonald and his men a march in Tehar Law. We a drum a drew and a tree and a drum. We a drum a drew drum dre. And I come near and near enough, and I their number saw. There were forty thousand Hillen men a march in Tehar Law. We a drum a drew and a tree and a drum. We a drum a drew drum dre. We a drum a drew and a tree and a drum. We a drum a drew drum dre. The Hillen men with their lang swords lay down in a spusser, and they drove back where all and men three acres big and bare. Way a drum a drew and a tree and a drum way a drum a drew drum dre. Lord Forbes day his brother did say no brother dinna you see the drivers by can ilk aside and we'll be forced to flee way a drum a drew and a tree and a drum way a drum a drew drum dre. Oh na 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 
my brother dear, this thing it mona be. You'll take your get sword in your hand and you'll gang in with me. Way a darum a do in the dee and a drum, way a darum a do drum dree. Way a darum a do in the dee and a drum, way a darum a do drum dree. Brothers brave gaed in the mine the thrang, and they struck down the hillin men with swords made sharp and lang. We a drum a do and a dree and a drum we a drum a do drum dree. The first blow that Lord Forbes struck, the sword ran in a nail. The second blow that Forbes struck, the great Macdonald fell. We a drum a do and a dree and a drum we a drum a do drum dree. Sick a cry fae among the hillin men when they see their leader fall. They carted him and buried him a lang while fae harlaw. We a drum a do and a dree and a drum. We a drum a do drum dree. We a drum a do and a dree and a drum. We a drum a do drum dree. Just tell them plain and dunk a plain they're sleeping at Harlow. We a drum a do and a dree and a drum. We a drum a do drum dree. We a drum a do and a dree and a drum. We a drum a do drum dree. so gifted in hindsight and pragmatism, the role of the seer, the foreteller of events, has been an amazingly important one. The most famous, or at least the best known, the Bran Seer, is thought to have been one Kenneth Mackenzie, Coinich Orr of the island of Lewis, but any more certain than that, we can't be through the mists of time. Perhaps the seer's greatest ability was that of detachment, the ability to see what really ought to be obvious that action based on romance and hype in the present may well lead to pain and death in the future. Dark lower the stones on the Kalanish skyline Like sentinels wrapped in the blackness of woe Winds from the hills are lamenting carry their tears to the green glen below. I see the mists rise from the loud falling quarry and wind through the crofts like a grey morning veil for clansmen that left us high bounding for glory shall never return to the land of the gale. Our maidens have braided the wild mountain flowers to crown the young heroes they wait their return. But hid from their ken is the heartbreak of ours when tidings of sorrow shall bid them for I heard the dread howl of the wolf on the mountain. I saw the dark death bird wing over the plain. I see a red wave and a blood curdled fountain. The war horse stands cruis on the breasts of the slain. The Saxon has swept o'er the dirk and the claymore, 
Our young men are fallen or scattered apart In cold mountain caves or in heather glen hiding No peacock to sound them back home from the war I see a black sail through the dim mist of evening It comes like a shadow at close of the day Oh, Scotland, lament on the death of your freedom and grieve for your sons that are carried away. are flying, their widows are crying, the Castleton's burning and Oliver's gone. Lock the door, Larison, high on the weather beam, see how the Saxon plumes bob in the sky. Yeoman and Carboneer, Billman and Halberdier, fierce is the folly and far is the cry. Newcastle brandishes, high as broad scimitar, Ridley is riding his fleet-footed grey. Hidley and Howard there, one dale and winter near, lock the door, Larriston, and hold them at bay. Why do you smile, noble Elliot of Larriston? Why does the joy candle gleam in your eye? Bold border ranger, beware of your danger, your foes are relentless, determined and nigh. Jock Elliot raised up his steel visor and looked, his hand grasped the sword with a nervous embrace. Ah, welcome, brave foemen, on earth there are no men more gallant to meet in the foray or chase. Little know you of the hearts I have gathered here, little know you of our lost troopers' might. Lint hope and sword be true, sunt hope and milburn too, gentle in manner, but lions in fight. I've mangled to Ogilvy, Rayburn and Netherby, Holsome of Whitram and all his array. Come, all Northumberland, Teasdale and Cumberland, Here at the Brecon Tower we'll end the fray. Scald the broad sun o'er the links of Green Liddesdale, Red as the beacon fire spreading the heat. Many a bold warrior's eye mirrored that morning sky, Only to dim in the cold grip of death. Shrill was the bugle's note, dreadful the warrior shout, axes and lances and splinters were born. Halbert and Hobart then brave the claymore in vain, buckler and armlet in shivers were shorn. See how they wane the proud files of the Windermere, woe Howard, woe to your hopes for the day. Hear the wide welkin rend while the Scotch shouts ascend, Elliot of Larriston, Elliot. The martial exploits of James Elliot, Knight of Liddesdale, are set during a time when, for Borders families, prowess with sword and spur was of greater value than courtly conversation. But outside the Ettrick Shepherd, James Hogg's jingle of names, little historical trace of the heroic Jock Elliot can be found at all. Still, of such stuff is the ballad made. Although historical embroidery can hardly be attributed solely to the Scots, otherwise some of the plays of one William Shakespeare may never have seen the light of day, let alone performance on the world stage. Here, though, the battles of Aldern in 1645 and Cromdale in 1690 become the one, resulting in a victory for the famed Marquis of Montrose. A remarkable triumph indeed, since the good man had been executed some forty years before. It seems the spirit of wishful thinking is more than willing 
even if the flesh of factual substance can be a bit on the weak side. Well, I threw my plidey, I poured my shoother, a poke a meal and a flask of poother, top of the hills and far away to view the hawks of Crondale. And as I come in by Aachen do a little wee bit fae the tune, in tae the heelands I was bound to view the hawks of Crondale. I met a man with a tart and trues and a spear to turn what was the news. Go he the hill and I'll be ruse that air they come to Crondale. We were in bed, sir, every man, when the English host upon us came. A bloody battle then began upon the hawks of Crondale. The English horse, they were so rude, they bathed their hooves in hill and blood. But to her brave clans, they boldly stood upon the hawks of Crondale. At this, the great Montrose did say, John Hill and Man, show me the way, for I will lower the hills this day and take the hawks of Crondale. Alas, my lord, you're no our strang, you barely hate ten thousand men. There's twenty thousand Englishmen stand rank and file on Crondale. But it's this the great Montrose did say, John Hill and Man, show me the way. And by my sword they'll rue the day that ere they come to Crondale. They were at breakfast every man when the great Montrose upon them come. A second battle then began upon the hawks of Crondale. The loyal stewards way Montrose say boldly set upon the foes and drove them back way hill and blows upon the hawks of Crondale. The Grant Mackenzie and Mackay soon as Montrose they did as five for they did strike most valiantly upon the hawks of Crondale. McGregor's they returned again, the Camerons did their standard shine, Macintosh scored a bloody line upon the Hawks of Cromdale. The Gordons boldly did advance, the Frasers fought with spear and lance, Stuarts got their heats to dance upon the Hawks of Cromdale. Donald's men, Clan Ranald's men, Mackenzie's men and McGilvey's men, with bonnets blue and braid claymores, they slashed at them on Crondale. For twice ten thousand Englishmen, five hundred fled to Aberdeen, the labour then lie on the green, are in the hawks of Crondale. Perhaps the harshest and most wasteful kind of struggle for any nation is that of civil conflict, where allies and attitudes seem to change as frequently as fashion. The writer pulls no punches as to the stark reality of carnage that took place in the Perthshire Pass of Kelly Cranky in 1689. Far from heroism, glory or valour, he declares that there should be no shame attached to prudent withdrawal from such madness being all the work of the devil, anyway. For he you been say brawlant, for he you been say branky o. For he you been say brawlant, come he by kill the cranky o. And ye had been war I hate, ye would na been say canty o. And ye had seen what I hate, seen on the braze o kill the cranky o. I fought in land, I fought in sea, I faced and I fought the Frankie O. But I met with the devil and Dundee on the braze of Kelly Frankie O. And ye had been war, I hate thee, ye would not have been so handy, O. And ye had seen what I hate seen on the braze of Kelly Frankie O. The bolt pit car fell in a fire and clavers got a clanky o. 
While passions run hot on both sides of any affray, Robert Burns' song of the warrior's farewell to Bonnie Mary stands aloof from mere partisan flag-waving. In fact, the soldier is almost indifferent to the battle, or even his own fate, compared with the simple pain of parting. They bring to me a pint of wine and fill it in a silver tassy that I may drink before I go a service to my bonny lassie the bold rock sands the pier old leaf food the wind blows free the ferry the ship rides by the berry cloth and i on leave my bonny mary the trumpet sound the banners fly the glittering spears are ranked ready. The shouts of war are heard afar. The battle closes thick and bloody. It's not the roar of sea on shore that makes me lie. It's leaving thee, my bonny Mary. Give it to me, a pint of wine, and fill it in a silver tassy. Flutters 
above your head Many a crest that is famous in story Mountain make ready then Sons of the mountain glen Fight for your right and the old Scottish glory March, march Ettrick and Tibia tail Why my lads do you gang forward in order March, march Eskdale and Liddesdale All the blue bonnets are bound for the border Grazing, come from the glen of the buck and the roe. Come from the crag where the beacon is blazing. Come with the buckler, the lance, and the bow. And march, march, head trick and tee your tail. Why, my lads, did he gang forward in order? March, march, Eskdale and Liddesdale. All the blue bonnets are bound for the border. Are bounding, stand to your arms down, went march in good order. England shall many a day tell of that bloody fray when the blue bonnets marched over the border. March, march, head trick and tee tail. Why, my lads, do you gang forward in order? March, march, Eskdale and Liddesdale. All the blue bonnets are bound for the border. are over the border. The sight of a monarch leading his own troops into battle must be an inspiring one, all the more so through its rarity. But in 1513, James IV was convinced that his hour to march in support of allied France against Henry VIII had come. The monarch led. The Scottish blue bonnets followed south into England and Flodden Field. The English shafts in volleys hailed, in headlong charge their horse assailed. Front, flank and rear the squadron sweep to break the Scottish circle deep that fought around their king. But yet, though thick the shafts as snow, though charging knights like whirlwinds go, though bill men ply the ghastly blow, unbroken was the ring. The stubborn spearmen still made good their dark, impenetrable wood, each stepping where his comrade stood the instant that he fell. No thought was there of dastard flight, linked in the serried phalanx tight, groom fought like noble, squire like knight, as fearlessly and well, till utter darkness closed her wing o'er their thin host and wounded king. Then, skillful Surrey's sage commands led back from strife his shattered bands, and from the charge they drew as mountain waves from wasted lands sweep back to ocean blue. Then did their loss his four men know, their king, their lords, their mightiest low. They melted from the field as snow when streams are swollen and south winds blow, dissolves in silent dew. Tweed's echoes heard the ceaseless plash while many a broken band disordered through her current's dash to gain the Scottish land. To town and tower, down and dale, to tell Red Flodden's dismal tale and raise the universal wail. Tradition, legend, tune, 
and song shall many an age that will prolong. Still, from the sire the son shall hear of the stern strife and carnage drear of Flodden's fatal field, where shivered was fair Scotland's spear, and broken was her shield. Despite the carnage drear that depleted the families of every household, farm and great house in the lowlands, Fair Scotland's spear wasn't to remain shivered for long. The old alliance was being maintained, and for anyone eager or patriotic or unemployed enough to accept, there would always be a place in the battle lines fighting against the armies abroad, an invitation that was to remain open for centuries to come. On the banks of their trickle water, my love and I did go. And on the old melodeon, I played so sweet and low. In the middle of the melody, her tears, they did overflow. She said, Johnny, soldier Johnny, must you leave? Muskets, they are polished, and the drums are set to play. And the captain stands awaiting for the breaking of the day. When the tall ships will make ready for to bear me far away. From the sweet and flowery banks, poetic war. From originally being Stuarts, or right-hand servants of the Scottish Crown, the Stuart family made its way to the very throne itself, but what a price for ambition. Murder, treachery, suspicion and exile seemed destined to be the lot of that unhappy family, and all hopes of restoration were literally shot to pieces on a bleak Dromossy moor outside Inverness. The year 1746 and history is about to record the name whose very sound is like the sonorous stroke of a death knell. Culloden. Cold the wind on the moon's blow Warm the enemy's fires glow Black the harvest of Culloden Love for our prince drove 
robbers on to Dramasi, but in scarcely the time that it takes me to tell. The flower of our country lay scorched by an army as ruthless and red as the embers of hell. Family names Gordon, Meldrum, Seaton, and Forbes are all associated with the Northeast, but here the military honours go posthumously to an unnamed dragoon captain who illustrates that not all casualties are to be found on the battlefield. Love of pretty girls and strong liquor has laid many a poor soldier low. Still, the roaring guns are heard afar, and everything denounceth war. Serve God, stand stout. Bold courage brings the gear about. Fear not, fate run, faint heart, fair lady, never won. There once was a troop of Irish dragoons came marching up through five eel, and the captain's fond in love we a very bonny lass. Her name it is called Pretty Peggy O. There's money a bonny lass in the howe of the lass. There's money a bonny lass in the giri o. There's money a bonny gin in the tune away but in. But the floor o oh, the mob bides in five e o. Oh come down the stair, Pretty Peggy, my dear. Oh come down the stair, Pretty Peggy O. Oh, come down the stair, bind back your yellow hair, take a last fair wheel, o oh, your daddy o. Oh. It's bra, oh it's bra, a captain's dearie to be. It's bra to be a captain's lady o. Oh. It's bra to rove and rant and to follow away the camp and to march when your captain he is ready o. Oh. There's money a bonny lass in the howl of less. 
There's money a bonny lass in the gilly There's money a bonny jean in the tune away but he But the flower o' oh, the all bites in five yo. Now mount cries the car, no mounts boys mount O oh, tarry says your captain, no oh, tarry o oh. O oh, tarry yet but another hour or two and see if the bonny lass will marry, oh. Twas early in the morning when we marched a war, and oh, but your captain was sorry, oh. The drums they did beat, or the bonny braes a gicht, and the band played the lowlands of five, There's money a bonny lass in the how walk the less. There's money a bonny lass in the geary o. There's money a bonny jean in the turn away but teen. But the flower o oh, the more bites in five o. Now lying ere we won by old Meldrum tune. It's her captain we had to carry o. We had nae gone but another mile or two when her captain we had to bury. Now green grow the birks on the bonny island side, and low lie the lowlands o' oh, five o. Her captain's name was Ned, and he died for a maid. He died for the charmer lass of five e-o. There's money a bonny lass in the how walk the less. There's money a bonny lass in the giddy o. There's money a bonny jean in the tune away but he. But the flower o' oh, the mob bites in five e-o. can be faced and arguments settled one way or another and throughout it all there can still be a mutual respect however grudging when the enemy becomes commercial gain or as it's sometimes known progress then it seems even human dignity becomes a casualty during the highland clearances of the 18th and 19th centuries the ruling government's final solution for a hostile and oft times troublesome people eviction and transportation became the weapons backed up by armed persuasion the old battlefields may now be silent. The conflict of interests continues. Oh, I sing of a people who once worked this land of plenty in the golden days of yesterday when barns were filled with rain now the wind laments her sorrow for the ones across the ocean who were driven from their homes to let the sheep and stag remain no more the children's laughter in the sunshine of the morning no more the milkmaid singing in the evening her refrain for the crofts lie bare and empty now the darkness is upon us o'er a land once filled with people now the sheep and stag remain
into battle How our men did swiftly answer Taking musket for claymore Joined the lines that marched away Now we're left with just their memory As the land falls far behind us And we're scattered on the wind Like seed to root in foreign clay No more the peat fire story of the heroes gone before us Just a whisper of their presence in the wind and mist and rain But the stones bear silent witness to the crushing of a nation And a land once filled with people, now the sheep and stag remain